My name is Helvi. I was born in Namibia. But at the age of three, I was taken into exile with my family for the liberation struggle of Namibia. But after nine years in exile, in both Angola and Zambia, I returned to Namibia, and I was 12 years old. During the time I was in exile, I did not receive proper education. And this became really a problem, especially in high school, where I received poor grades. And as a result, I did not pass my grade 12. But I had a dream to go to the university. With my poor grades, I went to the University of Namibia. I went there and I went to the Department of Theatre because I wanted to be an actress. And I told the gentleman, please, let me, just test me, ask me anything. I will improvise. And he said, okay, I'll take a minute. And he said, I love it. Let's go to the registrar. Unfortunately, when we were at the registrar, they wouldn't take me because of my poor grades. I didn't give up. I went to the Polytechnic of Namibia. <laughs> but the same thing happened. But regardless of my poor educational challenges, I managed to graduate college with a bachelor's degree in information technology from Wilberforce University and a master's in education with a concentration in e-learning from the universities of Illinois. <laughs> As a young mother living in the United States, my, I remember my pediatrician telling me and advising me that I must start reading to my children before they could even say their first words. And she really emphasized on the importance of reading. And in the US, there are so many books. There are so many colorful and interactive children's books. But I wanted my children to also learn my mother tongue. And I wanted them to learn the stories, the African stories, and especially the Namibian stories that I grew up listening to. I was so naive, I went online and I started Googling for these kind of books. And I was disappointed because I couldn't find any. Then I contacted my family and my friends in Namibia and all they could find was textbooks and dictionaries. Then I decided I have to come up with a plan. And I went on Microsoft Words. I used my son Behani's images, and that's how I wrote in Yolutu, meaning body parts, as you can see it on the screen. And then for me to get to be able to have an actual book, I went online. And then I used, um, I used some self-publishing and I got a copy. And I was so excited to have a book that I've written. And immediately I put it on some social media, on a social network. And I shared it with my Namibian friends who were living in the US and the UK and in all over the world. And to my surprise, they asked me to send them copies. And then I realized there was a gap I was supposed to fulfill. In 2009, my family and I moved to Kenya as a result of my husband, Brian, volunteering with Volunteer Service Overseas. And while we were in Kenya, I wanted to learn Swahili, 
which is the national language in Kenya. I wanted to learn with my children, just using the basic picture books. But when I went to the shops, I could only find books written in Swahili alone, the books for children, and, and um, dictionaries and textbooks. Then I thought to myself, I think I can create a book. And um, I remember Miles Monroe once said, you don't have to know everything to do anything. There will always be people to help you. So with a good friend of mine, Lucy, who's a, a Swahili, um, she's a Swahili teacher, I compiled my manuscript and I took it to publishers in Kenya. They were excited, they loved the idea. But then they told me, we have to wait for somebody to come from the UK to make the decision. And this is the process that would take plus minus one year to two years. But then, we're only going to be in Kenya for 18 months. So I had to come up with a plan. And I spoke to my husband and few friends, and I said, I'll use our savings, and I'll create it myself. And with the help of my friends and the very, very talented illustrators, I was able to publish two children's books in Kenya, Baby's First Kiswahili Book and Wanyama Animals. Today, these two books are in 52 Kenyan national libraries. And together with seven other books I've written, they are, of course, in the Namibian libraries and schools, in the UK, in South Africa, in the USA, Netherlands, Sweden, and the list goes on. As both a Namibian and an educator, it's with a concerning fact that only 30% of learners who are enrolled in primary schools in Namibia, they complete secondary school. Furthermore, the 2014 grade 10 result indicates that 35,000 592 learners who wrote their final exams, 16,328 learners passed. I'm sorry, failed. Meaning 19,264 19, learners qualified for admission to grade 11. If nothing is not done to improve the passing rate, we are going to see more and more young people struggling to look for opportunities, struggling to go out to look for employment. Education is a critical catalyst to the realization of a Namibian Vision 2030. When I returned to Namibia, end of 2010, I spoke with one of my uncles. Mr. Ambrosius Amtenya. And I told him, I can't wait to take my books to the Namibia Book Fair or any event that I'll be able to display my books. But he told me, there's no such a thing here. And at first, I didn't quite grasp what he was talking about. Coming from the US, and especially in Kenya, where they have the Nairobi International Book Fair, where publishers and authors come together every year, I could not imagine not having such an event in Namibia. But later on, he told me, you can do it. But I didn't believe him at first. But the more I thought about it and I started doing research, as you say, 
The rest is history. In 2012, I initiated the first Namibia Book Fair with help from some NGOs, embassies, and a lot of friends and family members. During the book fair, Yambeka Children Media, Yambeka Children Media, an um, social enterprise which I created to promote African languages and African tales, went to schools to do storytelling. And during this time, I discovered that many government schools don't have what we call readers' books for grade one to grade three. And I also found out that many parents, they don't know the importance of building or developing a home library. Some parents make comments like, no, my children are too young for books. I'm not going to get them any books. And these children are like six. I asked, how old are they? Six or nine or even ten. And some made comments like, no, my children will go and learn, read at school. That's why I pay school fees. <laughs> and I couldn't quite understand that. And I also found out that in many Namibian bookshops, I could not find the local books. Even African tales, they're missing. If we don't see the importance of education, how can we come up with initiatives to enhance the early literacy through the African narratives? To encounter, to to counter these perceptions, Yambeka Children Media stressed the importance of reading stories to young children as a way to develop, as a way to develop early literacy. Parents and teachers who read to children, they must also engage young children with lively and enthusiastic books that bring characters to life. And they should also make sure that this sparks children's comprehension, vocabulary, and interest. I have a talented niece. She can draw. And she loves drawing princesses. But if you flip through her drawing book, what you see is princesses with blue eyes and nothing that really reflects how she looks like. Another relating story, one day my daughter Damana came to me and she said, Mom, I want to have beautiful hair like a princess. And I asked her, what do you mean? And she was, no, you know how babies and other princesses are supposed to look like? And right then, I knew I was supposed to create a book, a, a book with a princess that reflects an African child. It's imperative to write books with the African content so that the African children don't only see one image or one race. They need to be given an opportunity to see characters that reflect, that looks like them. It's crucial that for children to learn these values because Developing positive attitude towards our own culture and the cultures of others is necessary for both social and personal development. I strongly believe that giving children an access to, access to literature 
at an early age is extremely important. It's very important for their success in life. African children know about Cinderella. They know about Peter Pan. They know about all this little red riding hood. It's about time the African children and every child in the world to know about the Kishi Kishi the monster, <laughs> the Nehoya and the crocodile, the jackal and the hyena, so that they can also learn and appreciate the African rich culture. I'm sure you agree with me. Thank you.